Hey parents, there's a lot of talk about how to get your baby to sleep better, but this video is about how you can get the most out of your sleep as a new parent. Your sleep is going to be limited as a parent with a new baby, but these tips are going to help you squeeze the very most out of those limited hours of sleep that you're getting. I'm Bridget, a childbirth educator, birth doula, and a parent just like you, and I'm here to give you the resources and information to thrive as a parent. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and then hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. The first tip that I have for you parents is to put away and turn off screens. Most of us are used to picking up our phone or turning on the TV when there's a moment of downtime. This isn't bad all the time, but it does suck a lot of time away that could be spent taking a nap while baby naps or going to bed early after baby goes down for the night. Not only do screens waste a lot of time, they also emit blue light that actually suppresses the body's release of melatonin. And melatonin is crucial for falling asleep and then staying asleep. I can almost guarantee you that by putting your phone away, like away, away, even in a drawer away from you or turning off the TV, you will get more sleep. If you do want to be on your phone or watch TV, give yourself a time limit or even set an alarm so that you know when to turn it off and then put it away. The second tip is to feed your baby as often as you can throughout the day. For newborns, this might be between every one to three hours or for older babies, closer to that consistent three hour time period. Making sure your baby gets frequent full feedings means that they are getting most of their calories during the day so that at night they are less hungry. When your baby is a newborn, they will need to eat throughout the night for nutrition. And as they get older, they might wanna eat through the night for comfort as well as nutrition, but often, the more you focus on day feedings, the better they're going to sleep at night. And just an added side note, formula does not necessarily fill a baby more than breast milk. So if you're breastfeeding, giving formula will not guarantee that they'll sleep better or longer. The next tip is to create a routine for yourself. You've probably heard that it's helpful to give your baby a nap or bedtime routine, but adults benefit from it too. A bedtime routine helps differentiate the day from the nighttime. It prepares your body and mind for sleep, and it helps you fall asleep better. Routines don't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as washing your face, putting on pajamas, and reading a book before bed. Whatever you do, make it into a routine so that over time, the activity actually triggers a physical sleepy response that helps you fall asleep faster and then stay asleep longer. Now with a baby, you're most likely going to be waking at least once, probably more at night to feed, change, or soothe baby. So my fourth tip is to put essentials near your bed or near where your baby is sleeping. So extra diapers, wipes, burp cloths, an extra onesie, an extra shirt for mom if she has leaked breast milk onto herself or a baby spits up on you, extra pump parts if you're pumping, etc. Having your essentials close by, organized, and easy to access is going to make those those middle of the night wake ups more efficient with less thinking so that you can grab what you need, do what you got to do, and then just go back to bed. The next tip is to avoid diaper changes at night if you can. Of course, if your baby has pooped, you'll definitely need to change them, but if it's just pee, then probably it can wait till the morning. If baby is leaking through their diapers, then just size up just for nighttime, and that will usually do the trick. Also, a little bonus tip, if you apply pure lanolin on your baby's diaper area before bed each night, it acts as a protective barrier to avoid diaper rash. I've linked the one that I recommend down below, and I've used it for both my daughters for this reason for years now. Now this tip is for pumping mamas. And if you are one, you should be pumping at least once at night and during the early weeks, two or three times at night. And it can be time consuming and exhausting, especially when you're tired at night. So if you are a pumping mama, have two or three sets of pump parts so you don't have to wash them in the middle of the night. And after your first session, you can leave your freshly pumped milk out in a closed container at room temperature until your next pump session if that's within four hours. Freshly expressed milk can be left at room temperature for about four hours until it needs to be refrigerated or consumed. So instead of going to the fridge each time, if you're going to be getting up to pump again in three or four hours or feed your baby, just give baby that previously pumped bottle or wait to put both batches in the fridge at the same time. Again, that's only within that four hour window. If your pumping session stretches further 
further apart than that, you'll need to put it in the fridge or freezer before that. But doing those things is going to save you so much time and energy at night so that you can get more sleep. I have a bunch of pumping products linked down below for you if you need some extras. My next tip is to use a sound machine for your baby. Babies are easily startled by noise, so using a white noise sound machine is incredibly helpful in turning out common noises like the door closes, a dish being put away, a drawer being shut, loud walking, all noises that we are pretty used to, but ones that easily startle and wake a baby. Plus, babies are used to constant noise in the womb, so using a steady white noise in the background is familiar and actually comforting for them, which can help them sleep. And when they are sleeping better, you are going to be sleeping better too. I've used the Hatch Baby Sound Machine for three years now, and it's my favorite, and it's the one that I recommend to every single parent I know. So I have that one linked down below. My next tip is for those of you who experience anxiety before bed or just difficulty falling asleep. First of all, I do wanna address that if you're a new mama and this is something new to you since having a baby and you're also dealing with scary, intrusive thoughts, fearful flashbacks to your birth experience or an irresistible need to check in or watch over your baby all the time, it might mean that there is some healing that needs to take place and that will require some extra support. It's common, so don't feel like you're alone, but it's not normal or something you just have to bear forever. So talk to a trusted person, ask for resources from your care provider and get the help that you deserve. So on that note, one great tool for anyone dealing with anxiety is to meditate. And my favorite way to do this is by being guided by affirmation meditations. It's really easy when you're not being guided to have your thoughts drift or spiral into a more negative headspace. But listening to affirmation meditations is really powerful in helping you relax into a more positive state of mind. And where your mind leads, your body follows. I have a whole set of built to birth affirmation meditations for you that you can get down below that range from pregnancy to birth and then into postpartum. And there are ones that are specifically designed to help you wind down, find peace, and to fall asleep. So if you're finding yourself at night struggling to sleep, even though your baby is, I would give these a try and you can listen to them for free by clicking this link right up here in the corner. The ninth tip I recommend, which is sort of piggybacking off the last one, is to use a weighted blanket. During my second pregnancy, sleep became extra challenging and I experienced some increased anxiety as well and using a weighted blanket greatly enhanced my sleep. So I've linked one down below that I love and that I think you will too. And then my final tip is to have an orderly and clean-ish room before bed. I know when you have a baby, life can be a little hectic and disorganized, and that's okay, but if you can create just in your room or at least on your bedside an organized and semi-clean space, it's going to help you have a more clear, relaxed, and restful mind and body as you wind down and drift off to sleep. Often when our spaces are chaotic, our minds feel the same way, and we want to create as much mental and physical piece as possible and a quick cleanup before a nap or bedtime can help a lot. So parents, those are my top 10 tips for helping you make the most out of your sleep. Sleep is so important and I'm confident that if you start using these tools that I've given you, your sleep will improve in one way or another. So thanks for being with me in this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye parents.